Hello and welcome back to Art of Awakening, giving a jump start to your spiritual genius so that you can leave those dark nights of the soul behind and create your own bright day of the soul. And today we uh, have a special guest on today, and I would like to give a really warm welcome to today's guest, Von Galt. Um, aside from being a quantum healing hypnosis technique practitioner, Vaughn holds the unusual distinction of also being an IT professional who holds an MBA in e-business. And with this dual background, Vaughn is in a unique position to bridge the gap between two very different worldviews that have been very separate until now. And uh, Vaughn is a published author who is currently working on a new book on information about star seeds, indigos, awakening, and the ascension of Earth and its people. And this is information that her clients keep bringing through in sessions. But the interesting thing is that most of these people have never heard of these topics before in their lives. So welcome, Vaughn. We are so glad to have you. Yes, I'm really excited to be here and provide this information to your audience. So, yes. Yes, and I think it's just the perfect topic to kick off 2020 and this whole decade that we've come before us because I think this is really going to be a harbinger of what we're going to be seeing in these next few years. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah. So, so Vaughn, can you, before we dive in, can you tell us just a little bit about your background and and what it is that you do the the qhtt hht work yeah and, and your other background too yeah so basically um i am a normal working mom okay so i have to balance having a full-time job in the it field um here in seattle washington as well as juggling my responsibilities as a mom on the side, I also have a private practice as um, a hip, hypnosis practitioner through the Dolores Cannon method of hypnosis, which is quantum healing hypnosis technique, QHHT is what it's commonly known for. And, um, you know, as a book writer, I'm always looking for new ways to get interesting content to write books about. And I write based off whatever is inspiring to me and whatever I am interested in. And um, my background that brought me to Dolores Cannon's um, method of hypnosis is that um, I've I'm, I have over 40 years of experience being raised in Tibetan Buddhism. And um, I'm Laotian, and um, Buddhism is, is very part of the fabric of my upbringing. And a lot of these quantum um, mystic studies in reincarnation, the wheel of Dharma, soul groups, old souls, awakening, and living your highest frequency reality mm -hmm. um, through you know tackling the issues with the dark night of your soul. Those are very common topics in Tibetan Buddhism, and. Um, as I started to get into the research on consciousness and mindfulness studies that many um, Buddhist monks were volunteering to do um, through a, a lot of academic uh, research, like the Dalai Lama was a very prominent part of encouraging, um, you know, working on bridging the, the left brain and the right brain and the hemisphere, um, bridging the connection between the metaphysical and the mainstream and so I followed those those research um, and was very fascinated with it going into mindfulness and consciousness and trying to bring that into the fold into a lot of different facets of society that it ended up bringing me to Dolores Cannon's work who um, who I found through that she was the 45 years of hypnosis and uncovering fascinating information. And so as a writer myself, um, a lot of the content that she was bringing forth, I'm already familiar with from my mm -hmm. Tibetan Buddhist background mm -hmm. and my English mm -hmm. background. Sure. And so it was just like walking into something I already know. And it was a great method to bring really rich content for my creative writing. Sure. And Right. As a result, I also help people heal themselves, help facilitate their healing, and help them find closure and answers to questions and challenges that they have been working on for most of their lives, trying to get to awakening or trying to address mm -hmm. the dark side of the soul. 
So, okay. So what types of people are you working with? Because you, you had mentioned that when you were speaking to me, that you're in Seattle, right? Yeah, I'm in Seattle. Yeah. So um, the very interesting thing is, um, and Seattle is very unique in that, um, you know, I, I, I met, we very close to where I live, um, there's a city engineer named Chuck Petties. And he went in his uh, working uh, city planning days, he actually worked with a couple of city planners back in 19, um, I think 87, and they, and they decided, you know what, we really want to um, infuse our love for metaphysics into city planning. And we want to um, design the space in a way that we would attract higher frequency individuals and raise the consciousness of our city. Um, because we want our city to prosper. Yeah. So what Chuck Penny's and his team did as city engineers is again a great example of fusing that left brain and the right brain and 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 just you know, connecting the dots there um but they they map the ley lines of seattle and seattle being over water all sacred space is over water the pg sound is underneath the city um, and the area so they mapped all the ley lines and then they built um, very tall kind of stonehenge type of architecture that are like half the size of skyscrapers in these points and ley lines and put power plants in the points and ley lines all over Seattle. Um, and I am getting chills. <laughs> I'm sorry, I, I just chills right now. It's fascinating. And he actually worked with Buckminster Fuller. Um, mm. In, in his um, his early scholarly days. But anyway, so Seattle has been designed around sacred space. Mm -hmm. And I actually work in a, um, a building in Seattle um, that has a Stonehenge structure half the size of the skyscraper and not far away are three, um, you know, floor height level um, Tesla um, sculptures. So it's, it's really, it's really kind of um, iconic and kind of mirroring the, the inspiration. But um, I don't necessarily know if it works, but as a result, um, they connected it to Portland, they connected the Leyline project to San Francisco. And the, in an effort to try to attract um, higher frequency individuals in the West Coast, um, is technological and it is very progressive in moving forward into um, kind of a more awakened, a more higher frequency state. My point in bringing that up is as a QHHT practitioner looking for rich material to write books about, mm -hmm. I keep getting these high frequency people who in Dolores Cannon's um, words are indigo or star seeds. Mm -hmm. In Buddhism, they would call them the Toku children. Toku. Uh, oh, what does it mean? So the Toku children in Buddhism is um, they're really old souls that um, have information about metaphysics. In 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 that tradition, it would be information about Tibetan Buddhism, the ancient mystic parts of it, and they they uh, have been born into this world to bring the metaphysical knowledge and share it with everyone else to help raise the frequency. So like whenever they're looking for a new Dalai Lama, for example, um, the, the monks would meditate and they would through, through um, remote viewing, try to locate the Atoku child that would help, um, would help their tribe prosper and, you know, kind of shepherd the tribe into the next, you know, phase of um, that Dalai Lama's life. So, but Toku children have been around in Asia for a very, very long time. They crop up all over the world and they're just high frequency old souls. So um, you recognize these Tokyo children because, they, you know, they, they, they've they come up with concepts and all of a sudden they're a master in like a year or two and they haven't even learned a, the alphabet. Um, they're, they have they have come in with old knowledge and they're bringing it forth. And um, one of the things that I keep getting in my sessions are um, people you know, wanting to know what their purpose is. They want to know how they can, you know, kind of help their awakening. Um, they want to raise their frequency so they can ascend to higher levels of consciousness. Mm -hmm. And um, and I keep getting um, information about the great library in the spirit world. 
Okay. And, but these are people from like, like they're from the IT world, right? Pretty much or? Well, in, in, in Seattle, I get a unique badge and every single QHHT practitioner who comes into this work um, gets, gets a different set of mm -hmm. types of clients. Okay. Mm -hmm. And the types of clients that I get are typically they're just coming here because um, they they are going through their awakening or they've had their awakening or they're going through the dark night of soul or they've had the dark night of soul episode, and so um, they they don't want to be a celebrity they don't want you know do any you know be in the public eye they just want to live their best life they want to infuse um, their interest in metaphysics and their awakening into the career. Years. They want to, uh, they're coming here because they're working out some issues in their personal life that they want, they're tired of spinning their wheels and they want to go straight to source and talk to their subconscious and, and mm -hmm. understand why in the wheel of Dharma, mm -hmm. this incarnation, do I continually manifest this type of people at this type of situation? And oftentimes when I regress them into a QHHT session, um, three lifetimes come up and there's a theme and then they see why they're doing what they do. And so a light bulb comes on that they know what they need to address and work on on the personal level so they can get to the, to the good part. In the sure. life they're like self-aware of how they create and manifest in this holographic reality. That's their awakening. That's the light bulb moment is that they, the user within the hologram realizes that it's just responding to their commands. And so instead of manifesting the same old story over again, they can mm -hmm. use QHHT as a cheat code and just cut right through to the good stuff and stop repeating the stuff that's not taking them anywhere mm -hmm. in their life. And so they're running the wrong program or something, right? Yeah, and they're, like, they're, they're, they're to, yeah. Yeah, there's a bug in their life and they just need to turn that bug off or, <laughs> they need to, uh, um, you know, being IT, uh, they, they need to, uh, they need a, a virus scan to just get rid of that part where. Yeah. Okay. So, um, got a little bit interrupted because of bandwidth and, um, I'm just going to turn my video off. And so, so Vaughn, where were we? We were, um, you were talking about the clients that, that you were just wanted to be normal everyday people, but actually bring their spirituality into their work and their lives in a way that was meaningful. And I think that is probably a common theme for uh, many, many of us. And I think an increasing number of us, um, you know, let's, let's get it off the meditation yes. and into life. Yes, yes. So a lot of the clients that I get, like I said, they just, they're coming through and they, they want to get some questions answered and some clarity on some of the challenges that they're dealing with in their life. And then they just want to learn how can I be a better doctor and um, infuse my interest of energy healing into my profession. You know, how can I, as a scientist working on, um, you know, some, some equipment, infuse my interest of metaphysics into that or if they're working on something and they just can't figure it out um mm -hmm. they know to come to a qht session just to be able to have a conversation with their subconscious or otherwise known as the oversoul hi <laughs> i'm sorry i'm just laughing something does not want this message out there so we're just going to push through with we're this gonna push um, through it. we're going to push yeah. through it so what I'm going to suggest is you turn off your video too. And at this point, I will just um, put on the, um, what do you call it? The thumbnail for the thing. And we'll just do it like a podcast. Okay. okay. So, so is that, is that good? Yeah. So, so yeah, more technical difficulties. So we're just going to turn off the audio altogether. But it's so fascinating um, that you, you were saying there was this message, this universal message that was coming through with, when you took all these experiences collectively yeah so the universal message again um being here in the seattle area i get a lot of engineers i get doctors i get hotel owners i get professional chefs um it kind of runs the gamut but everybody that i get is a um a very highly evolved soul 
and they are here for the awakening. They are here to raise consciousness um, through the people in their lives and through positively affecting other people around them. And the, the thing that I get over and over again in my sessions that I'm putting in my book is that um, wherever you are in the world, in whatever incarnation you came in through, um, I, all these different elements that make up who you are, such as your race, your religion, your culture, um, the country you're in, et cetera, if you're male or female, it doesn't really matter. These are all elements of what make you who you are, and they're part of your story. And the oversoul, or the, the, everyone's subconscious keeps saying over and over again that these are part of your story and these are challenges um, that you have and it is your challenge to integrate all the different elements of who you are and work with other people, keep an open mind and work with other people to bring in the new earth or to bring in a higher reality full of highly enlightened people with a higher level of consciousness. And the thing that I always get when I regress my clients further past their earthly or um, other lifetime incarnations as aliens or elementals or whatever it they are, it doesn't really matter. That mm -hmm. is, all of that is the magic of the universe that just appeals to the awe in each child. So everyone loves that kind of that galactic image of um, different planets, different universes, even being a spirit guide and then incarnating, incarnating in as, a, a, as an earth being. Um, that's just the magic of the universe. But the real work that keeps coming up over and over again, the real work, the adult work is the awakening. It is you realizing that you are the one manifesting and attracting your own reality. And in order for you to change your reality, you have to realize and come to an awakening that you are spirit having a human being who is realize that you live in a holographic reality that is responding to the man, the, the commands of his user. So what you are, you manifest. What comes to you are to you is what you are. What you create is what you work on. Um, you know, so it's, it's all mirroring everything that's inside you. And so if you want to change the outer exterior, you have to change the person inside. And so there's really nothing else to do besides work on the dark night of the soul that you're going through. Work on the, the issues that you've been dealing with your whole life. Work on that childhood trauma that you're trying to overcome that is coming in in all facets of your life, in your career, in how you look at yourself, mm -hmm. um, and all these different things. These inner self-help type of things is what is going to change your reality. Um, I know in my spiritual background of Tibetan Buddhism, the, the form in which we change our reality is through um, the Four Noble Truths and the Eightfold Path, which is the basic fundamental of Buddhism, no matter the form. And the Four Noble Truths is, you, you know, life is suffering. Two is attachment causes suffering. Three is insights remove suffering. And four is living the Eightfold Path and suffering. And the Eightfold Path is very logical. Um, it's correct thought, speech, action, livelihood, understanding, effort, concentration, and mindfulness. So mm. there's, there's really nothing religious about the Buddhist tradition. It's actually very uh, methodical in mm. taking the Eightfold Path and looking at your issues that you're working with and addressing them one by one. And by addressing your inner demons, by addressing your challenges in your life and overcoming them, you change your energetic level in your body and mm -hmm. when you raise your consciousness level and you raise your energetic frequency because these things no longer weigh you down um, you attract a parallel reality that is in line with what you radiate at and you attract the things to you that work in perfect synchronicity so it starts 
it starts becoming a little magical. Your life becomes a little magical mm-hmm. uh, when you start following, um, you know, those insights and keeping yourself open to working with your guides and your your angels and all the people in the spirit side nudging you along, but they're not going to, what I find out is in my sessions that they're not going to tell you what to do or how to do it. Mm -hmm. Um, But they, they're waiting for you to come to your awakening and they're waiting for you to work on your ascension, which is raising your frequency up. And um, I always regress my clients into the spirit world. Many of them want to go there because they have a lot of questions about their life Um, and they get over the the fear-based you know earthly concepts of you know hell and demons and all that those are all self-manifested um you know punishments that that some people put themselves on and Mm -hmm. and that gets addressed as well but when they go to the spirit world what consistently comes through in all my sessions which again would be a great read um maybe in a future sci-fi book i write um Mm -hmm. it's a great library And no matter the person, because I get a lot of people who come from very, very strict religious backgrounds or atheists or no background at all, and they all go to the great library. And the great library that comes through in each one of my sessions is this huge light library. It's just magnificent. Um, And it just goes on and on and on and up and down. And when you go into the library, it has what the Westerners call the Akashic records of everyone. So everyone who is incarnating is their own author. They are writing their own book. They are writing their own song. They are writing their own album of music. And when you awaken to the greater reality that you manifest your own parallel reality, Mm -hmm. you move yourself from a 3D self into a 5D self. And when you start infusing the work that you were working on in the spirit world, and that you wanted to bring to share in the earth world as in your earthly incarnation, um, what you're doing is you're infusing your metaphysical work into your incarnation. And that's what literally everybody is trying to get to. And so when everybody who comes to me and or any QHHC practitioner to find their purpose and what their roadblocks are and try to get past that so they can live their best life. Mm-hmm. If everyone was the best engineer, the best doctor, the best cook, um, you know, and they infuse a little bit of that spirit knowledge into their work, um, then everybody all over the world will radiate at a higher frequency and we will change our reality and make positive changes in all areas of our culture and in all areas of how we interact and manifest this reality that we share. And that's really what keeps coming through in every single session. We're just here to raise consciousness. And that's how we do it, is by focusing on your inner work so that you can be the best version of you. Right. And that is that magical shift, right? Because, like, awake when we start to awaken, that's the starting point. But there's, (laughs) for a lot of us, we have that dark night of the soul, but it's like... (laughs) That's it's sort of like taking an airplane up through the turbulence to 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 get to get to those those bright clear skies above all those clouds yes. and that's yes. where a lot of us are starting to like hit that point. It's like, whoo, wow, it's so empowering because it's like, oh my gosh, I can actually, I am like this creator and I can I can really create my own reality. You do, it's, and everybody, and that's what keeps coming back through. I mean, I've had clients that have regressed to the spirit world to talk to their deceased loved ones who've told them the same thing. I've had them talk to um, or channel in um, their master teachers, uh, Jesus, um, Kuan Yin, anybody. It doesn't really matter. Anybody from the uh, different dimensions, I've had them all channel in their councils. It doesn't really matter. It's all the same information. The thing is, is that... Um, we are here to experience the best version of the incarnation that we have because it's part of our Akashic records. It's part of the book that we're writing. And that book is going to go into the great library. And when other souls decide to have an incarnation for their own 
personal growth, um, they're going to go through these records and they're going to read everybody's lifetimes and they're going to pull content to form the kind of life that they want to have in whatever reality um, that they want to incarnate into. Um, and so what QHHT does is as a modality, it's great for writers and artists like me um, to get content from. But on a personal level, it does do help facilitate some healings um, for many of my clients. But for the most part, it helps them address the issues um, that they have been working on for a very long time. And the common issue that holds them back from, you know, really getting to their awakening and really getting into the ascension process of elevating their consciousness is that childhood trauma, that mommy daddy issue that they just cannot get over on their own. And so when they come in for a session and they see that they've been doing the same um, arguments and type of issues with the same soul group, it yeah. really turns a light bulb in, in their world and they know exactly what to do to get past <laughs> this so that they can get to the good part, which is working on manifesting their best life. Right, right. And by exactly. manifesting your best life, you raise the consciousness of the earth and you raise the earth and the people into a 5D reality. Because you know, one of the things that all constantly come up, um, especially with Dolores Cannon's work, because she always talks about indigo and, and you know, uh, the new earth, is one of the things that continues to come up with the oversoul with my sessions is people need to realize, what do you think a 5D new earth, golden age reality, whatever your tradition describes it, heaven on earth, whatever, what do you think that looks like in medicine? Is it is more energy healing and kind of incorporated? What do you think that looks like in engineering? You know, what do you what do you think that looks like in um, in in construction? What does that look like in in education? You know, you have to ask yourself these questions. How does this reality look like in these different areas of your lives? So that is where the work is needs to be done, and that's where people need to bridge the gap between being left brain and right brain and just infusing the some of the knowledge that they have brought with them from the spirit world into right. their careers, into their lives. So if your job is to be um, a parent and raise higher consciousness children, then how can you, with what you have available to you, raise higher consciousness children, um, you know, so that they can do what they came here to do? Right. And that's really what it's all about because there's, there's, you know, in the greater reality, nothing is really real. We're just souls having, you know, a holographic experience. And so if, and they say this in, in, in um, quantum physics as well. And actually um, the 1979 Nobel Prize winner, Dr. Steven Weinberg, who won the Nobel Peace Prize on um, multiverses and proving mathematically that multiverses exist. Um, and, and there's a lot of this information already coming into mainstream, like um, the, the D-Wave computer, which is a quantum computer. Um, the fascinating thing about the D-Wave computer and in IT is um, they, it proves that what scientists know, which two atoms can exist at the same time in two different places. They're, they're parallel atoms. Mm. How can they exist at the same time in different places? Well, the D-Wave computer in IT that is working right now for the U.S. Um, military um, proves that you can have parallel realities. And basically what it does is a typical computer is a two-bit state where it's just ones and zeros. It's here or there, okay? But yeah. the thing with a D-Wave computer in IT is they it function in qubits, which means that it can run in two places at the same time, just mm -hmm. like an atom. And so what they found in the research that they're having talking circuits in academia about is the D-Wave computer is printing out um, solutions that doesn't exist in our reality. Interesting, wow. So even our technology is receiving an upgrade right now. Our technology is saying that there are other parallel realities. And so the military is pumping in, um, you know, information to, to find out how to solve different things that we have. And it's getting information about people and solutions that doesn't even exist in our reality. Hmm. 
okay? So we need to get over, get over the fear of being metaphysical because it's already coming into the mainstream in other people's work. And what I find is the people that come to me for a session, they are the most courageous people because they want to look their dark night of the soul straight in the eye and they want to overcome it because they want to get past it. And so, or they coming in with some questions about things that they're working on in their career or their life and they want to get, you know, a quick answer. So it, it really functions as a cheat code. Um, and I really recommend everybody to um, find a practitioner through Dolores Cannon's website and go get a session and ask every single question that you can ever ask because there's no stupid questions. Um, and this, yeah, and the subconscious, the same one in everyone. I, I've had, I've had sessions where the subconscious is talking to me and saying, oh, I keep answering the same question over and over again. And I say, it's for the client. <laughs> so. <laughs> That's hilarious. So Vaughn, how do people find out more about what you're doing, your, your practice, your QHHT work and your books? Well, um, they can go to my website, MerkabaChakras.com. And I think out this, it will be in the description of um, these videos as well. And in there is where they can find all my old blog articles um, that I've written about academic research into metaphysics in all areas, whether it's about the Vesica Pisces, whether it's about consciousness, mindfulness, meditation, you name it. Any kind of fringe topic that people in the past were interested in, um, in looking up, we already have academic research that has proven it to be somewhat correct or kind of in, in the right area. So um, a lot of consciousness and mindfulness research has been done in these, in these areas. And so it's coming more into the fold. And so that material is on my website, MercapaChakras.com. So that's really you up or given links so people can actually go to your website and find out a lot of this information. Oh, you, yes. You compiled it. You compiled it. Yes. Wow. It's, on, it's on the blog page and they can find and there's a great thing about Bucky and everything all, all these topics um uh, they're all in mainstream academia already that's um, a treasure because I think for there's a lot of a lot of people who are you know in this awakening process and they're feeling it but they're they're feeling stymied because they don't feel like they can even talk about it to their co-workers to their extended family and so forth and I think for a lot of people, if they can go and find that scientific information, it allows them to introduce this material in a way that people will actually listen to. Um, yeah. Which is beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. And it's always there. And actually, I'm working, um, I'm working on, because those articles are seven or eight years old. And mm -hmm. so a lot of the links have, um, some of the links have maybe not work anymore, or a lot of the people that I source, they've moved on to create their own foundations, websites, mm -hmm. um, et cetera. So they've gotten a lot of grants and funding for their work. Um, and it's just getting more into the fold. So I'm working on I'm, I'm updating a lot of those blog articles and putting it into a book, which I'll, I hope to put out um, in the next couple of months. But I also, um, I also write books and other topics, which you can find off my author's page on Amazon. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, yeah. And, and we'll put the link to that below then as well. Yeah, yeah, and um, and I like right now. I, I'm actually working on two books, which I'm hoping to publish in the next month. Um, and it is a it's a business book on how to, you know really in in business people people think that they can check out a spirituality, but the whole thing is spiritual. And mm -hmm. when you're buying and selling product, or you're making product in in the business world. Um, since nothing really is real and quantum physics is already proven it's just energy in a certain form what we are trading is we're trading love energy okay so it's nothing is real so what what somebody's buying from you is your expression of love Mm. And that's what you're trading is expressions of love energy. And so when something doesn't work like it's promised, that's why it hurts us in the heart. Mm. Okay. And 
That's beautiful. And that, I think, I think if, if a lot of the listeners out there, if they're considering maybe starting a business or actually are starting a practice in the healing or any business, it doesn't matter what. And there's a lot of light workers who want to be in business who have a real hard time charging for their, but if you think of that as I'm accepting love in return for the services that I'm giving, which is love, if you think of it as an exchange of love, it takes the toxicity out of the whole money. Well, I mean, yeah, toxicity. it's true. Yeah. And it's just, it, it's just like this. There's another, there's another way to consider it. Everybody, you know, there's that song, um, I want money, lots and lots of money. <laughs> <laughs> I want to buy in the sky. Um, I want to be rich. Anyways, um, you know what? A lot of people who make, and I, and I get clients who make a lot of money and they're still not happy with themselves. And the reason why is, is that, you know, the money is love. I want love, lots and lots of love. Mm-hmm. I can't get enough of it. But the reason why it doesn't fill that void inside, no matter how much love you get or you, you know, money you earn, um, mm-hmm. the reason why is because you haven't gone through your awakening. And, you, and, and you're still spinning your wheels on your childhood traumas and the issues that you have with your incarnation. And so if you, like I say, just go get a QHHT session, get past the stuff that, that, that you've been working on for a very long time and get to the good stuff, you know? Right. And, and, then, and then you'll see um, <laughs> and, and feel more gratitude for your life. Right. Yeah. And it uh, does change your life. Well, Bon, thank you so, so much for joining us today. And uh, despite all the IT issues, <laughs> 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 um, it's been a real pleasure. And, um, you know, what you're offering is, is so valuable. So, um, so I hope people do check out your website. And um, we'd love to hear your comments, your likes, and your shares too. If you feel that this has been valuable to you, please do share it. There's other people that will find it valuable as well. Yes, I, so, I, I will definitely sh- share it on um, my YouTube channel and, and other places as well. But yeah. My audience too. <laughs> yes, absolutely. So, so yeah, thank you so much. And, and just you have a wonderful new year, fun. And uh, to everybody who's tuning in as well, I wish you a very, very happy and joyous and exciting new um, decade that we're moving into. It's going to be a a wonderful decade. Yes. Thank you, everyone.